stage, and uh, yes, we do cater also. But we're actually, well, our, not, our main goal is not to fill up empty stomachs, but we have a different goal. Our goal is ultimately trying to truly um, actualize, um, actualize Korean food globalization. But it's a bit different right now. I'm a bit nervous because usually in TEDx um, uh, talks, usually it's pitch black, right? You can't see what, you, what people are doing. Usually I thought that would be my view. But, so I'm going to imagine that you're sitting here, but not going to. Okay. <laughs> As you can see, this is us, we have the backpackers. And can I just call up my, uh, like my colleagues or my crew members? Maybe they can start, stand down there. Or... Okay, perfect. All right. <laughs> um, the guy, well, the man standing right here is our, actually our head uh, planning person. He created this whole project. And the man over here is the co-manager. He supports him um, with directing and he makes all the contact calls. He's the one that drives the car mostly. And we actually <laughs> drove from LA to Chicago for about three days and he did like 90% of the driving, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the two beautiful ladies that are standing right here, including me, um, <laughs> the two ladies over here usually are the um, bosses in the kitchen, they do all the recipe planning, they, they, make, they direct us to do that and this, they boss us around and we listen to them. And I am usually the presenter who does all these making, um, advert, making mar like, online marketing, I do those and then I do the presentations. Okay, you guys can go now. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so people may be wondering that we're from CJ but no, we are a different independent group. Uh, it's a non-profit non organization called Being But Backpackers. As you can see, backpackers usually travel around the world, right? They travel to different places, we do that too, but then on top of that, we, have, we serve samples of Being But to people. We do this obviously to uh, increase awareness, but then as I told you, we want to, wanted to see if actually um, Korean food globalization is possible. And last year, um, in, last year my head manager, he traveled to 20 different countries serving over more than 10,000 people. And this year, our members of this project, we are um, visiting 10 different um, universities around, well, United States and the UK. And we're going to be, pla we're planning to aim to serve over 5,000 people this year. So, as I told you, what is globalization of Korean food? Okay, there are many, many different perspectives and opinions about this, and it's been hanging there as a governmental movement, and some people even think it's too old. It's old-fashioned, it's been there too long. But we wanted to, we did not think, of, think it was an old-fashioned you know, uh, movement. We thought, why does the government always have to do this? Why can't we try this out ourselves? And usually, when I'm, it is a bit monot like boring or typical, monotonous to compare Japan and Korea, but I'm going to do it again. But then, if you think of the Jap Japanese food industry, it's really big. Like, um, you, there's a, the fish industry that's dramatically increased because, because of the um, Japanese food, and food you know, globalization. And especially, there's, uh, there's new industries that develop, like the soy sauce or wasabi, for example, kikkoman. People like to have kikkoman and rice only. And I, I thought, why not Korea? Why not Korean food? Why is Korean food always in Korea or is limited in, what, in Asia? So we thought that globalization of Korean food can be something different. Some people think it's simply increasing awareness, or some people think it's letting people eat Korean food. But then, as I told you, why not develop a new industry of Korean food? So um, we think we're trying to not only create a new industry, as I told you, for um, our national, well, um, our country's economical benefits, but why not for the whole public profit, like for every, everyone that can grow off of this industry and also can you know, live off with it. So, but to create an industry is obviously very time consuming. And it doesn't take 
a year or two, sometimes it even takes 10 years. And um, projects like this may not, you know, make it come, make, you know, make it happen. But then, you know the talk that we just saw, like we have a lot of prototypes, you need to have a lot of practice in order to, you know, get the goal to happen. I think it's, it's the same thing. We're doing the prototypes right now. And, um, and okay, now I'm shaking. Okay, and I think that um, to develop an industry is, and to shorten the time of developing an industry is the projects that we're, like, that we're doing right now. So we're challenging to shorten the time. So as you can see, we're challenging. Now I'm going to introduce what, you know, three different challenges that we're trying to do and we are doing and that we have done before. And the first challenge um, that I'm going to talk about is a project that was done in 2011 which is called, uh, which was called 100 beam back, um, beam up tables, and at first I wasn't in the in that group, but it was all over the media because it was such it was a very sensational, interesting, out of the box kind of challenge. Because usually when you go to school, well, no, not school, when you go to um, you're like employed and employed, you don't drop it and come out and go out to the world and serve bibimbap. It's not usual. And in Korea, especially in my age, from 20 to 25, or maybe in the late 20s, they concentrate on their specs. And here are the specs is something in Korea that's simply uh, something that to add another line in your resume, maybe. But they thought something else, not the same way, not to, not to tick off to do um, the things that are in the to-do boxes. They did something that has never been done before. So obviously, because there aren't any examples that were similar to these projects, when they wanted um, financial support, nobody, um, nobody supported them. Well, maybe a few groups, like the government, but a very little portion. So they financed, they finan they financed their financials themselves. And they went out. And as you can see, well, not as you can see, when you start something, when you cross the line, then the next line is obviously finished, it, right? And they wanted to prove that impossible. Oh, there's a. And then we, I'm going to call you call this the creative challenge because obviously it's thinking out of the box, which never happened before. And then this was the 100 beam pop tables. And they, when people thought it was impossible, they made it possible. I know it's very, you know, a cliche. They made it possible by completing and accomplishing 100 beam bug tables and serving more than 10,000 people, as I said before. And after their project, they gained a lot of insight, and not through the media or not through the government, but they truly realized that globalization of Korean food could be possible. So um, our head manager started to recruit people that were more not into the challenges, but more into the globalization of Korean food. Then. We, recruited, we were recruited, we were actually signed up online um, after listening to radios and after um, looking at his documents and um, docu documentaries. And um, when we were recruited, we didn't start off this project at first. We just gathered, obviously, to research on Korean food globalization. So we listened to, we read articles, we read through essays, we met people that were related to Korean food, um, Korean food globalization. And when we met them, we heard a lot of different perspectives and a lot of different opinions. But the problem was that it's, it was just abstract. It was in words. It wasn't in action. So, why, so when we were listening to them, they were all different and interesting strategies, but then they were just not being conducted. So we asked ourselves, why not we try those strategies? Why not we go out there and do it ourselves and not wait here just sitting to, for the government to do it? Then we try to put the words into action. So abstract back into action. So we call this the real challenge. So we said it's going to, when we started having the real challenge, we um, started um, like applying the four Ps, the um, STP and the five forces model and all those basic big named business model stuff. But then we, you know, the STPs was, was easy because we had insights from the project before. And we selected United Kingdom and um, United States because it had, it creates the most of the trends, you know, 
and it also is, and also were the countries that um, had the most, you know, a supportive, like supportive um, responses. And we also selected to the ages from 20 to 30 because they are a bit vulnerable and they are risky at changing their minds very quickly, but they were also very open people that um, appreciated new cultures. So we selected 20 to 30, um, 20 to 30 ages, and we pos positioned um, bibimbap not as a Korean food, but as a food that was healthy, tasty, and simple. So if you see our um, leaflet, it's not covered, it's Korean. It says it's a Korean mixed bowl, but it doesn't say all over the place it's Korean. There's no Korean five colors all um, around the leaflet. We tried to position as a green food that was more healthy and simple. And, but then we faced the limitation, obviously. We couldn't fill in the five forces because we did not um, have all the details or all the insights. So we are doing that right now. In our project right now that we're processing, we um, have questionnaires in our surveys that um, not only try to get the information what we can see, like if the person is tasting it or if the person is eating it and liking it, but we're actually um, trying to get the five senses um, details, like is it, crisp, is it too crispy, is it too spicy, or is it, it like all those different kind of details through the questionnaires. And when we get these questionnaires, obviously we're going to hand it over to our next, um, next recruited members. But then, now, will there be next challenges? Obviously, there will be next challenges because I was also one of the motivated people who wanted, who weren't interested in bibimbap or um, Korean food globalization. But that document actually motivated me and made me not drop out of school, but take a break at school and come out here and talk to you guys and give out bibimbap to people. And then when I started um, giving out bibimbap to people, there was a very interesting thing. There were lots of very interesting things, but the problem, not the problem. Oh, so we're calling it that motivative challenge. Okay. And um, so we also found a lot of interesting facts, but um, we, the focus that I wanted to focus on the, uh, the it, this challenging cycle that I put up here is that when this cycle is repetitively done, and the frequency is much more oftenly, you know, like when more projects like us are um, trying to stri strive for the same subject called Korean food globalization, then why not? Then we think that not, not, it's not like an abstract um, idea that Korean food globalization can happen like in 10 years. We can actually bring that down to actually quite a quick time. So we can shorten the time, as I told you before. So I know the um, uh, presentation should be simple and very short with lots of information, with um, as detail, no, not detailed information, but I wanted to share quite a lot with you. And that's why it's, the presentation was a bit um, all over the place. But um, our, our Facebook page and our blog is much more organized and like, detailed, so you can go through our Facebooks and our blogs to see the information, it's all in the leaflet. And the key point that we wanted to tell you is that Bimba Backpackers or similar projects like us um, will play a significant role in actualizing Korean food globalization, ultimately providing a realistic strategy to the society so they can actually, um, you know, um, they can activate the strategy, is that right? Okay. And the second um, key point is that repeating and continuing the challenging cycle will develop a market and even further create an industry. Um, this, th you can, the, the link is quite far apart away, but if you think of it this way, it's quite simple. For me, after I finish this project, I am actually going to plan a to start a business in Los Angeles to have with Korean food. And I'm doing, I was planning that before, but. I did, ha I did have doubts because I was you know, scared that it won't sell, it won't be a money-making um, business. But now I have, um, I have like the guts, is that right? Now, I have the <laughs> now I'm sure that it can be money-making because um, so many, the, actually the market out there is there and it's waiting for us to reach out for them. So I think that people like us not only should do the, um, to tick off the to-do lists like 
taking the TOEFL test or getting um, or going out to have abroad studies and like that. We're, I think that we should think out of the box and take other um, experiences like this and create more jobs or maybe, yes. Thank you very much. That was our presentation. <laughs> Thank you.